Okay, gentlemen. First of all, thank you very much for playing. If you have anything that you would like to throw a shout-out to, now is the time to do it, Shedver. Go first. Uh, nope. I don't have one. Alright, Mercury. I don't really have shout-outs. Ever. <laughs> I don't have friends. Okay. <laughs> oh. Fair enough. <laughs> Well, then I will at least say thank you very much to ZRQ and Nazgul for showing up with little to no notice, unfortunately, on our part. Um, for anybody else who would like to watch the VODs, they will come up on the Day Night Show Matches web thingy, www.tinyurl.com slash daynights. That's where the archives will be, and I will try to make sure that they go up. Actually, if I can, I want to see if I can get them up by tomorrow. I'm trying to get a little bit more disciplined about it. But other than that, let's talk about the games. First one was played on Catalina. Shadra was able to pick up that game. So talk a little bit about the build orders that you used in that game and how things ended up shaping up for you. We'll have uh, Shadra start the one, this one. Okay. Um, so I was gonna do like just like the standard like one base target opening, like what I did in the second game. But then I scouted the Twilight Council, and so I just decided to drop a Robo because the Robo is just good against Twilight Council. Because you can stop DTs and um, blink, and then from there, I was in a pretty good position. But it got a little scary when I had the one immortal, and I, uh, he was just starting to warp in stalkers, and I was a little afraid. But once I stopped that, I think I was pretty good. Yeah, all right. What about from you, Mercury? Yeah, the build I used is actually it's like a copy of Parting's um, a blink build, and uh, um, since I didn't use it for like. In eternity, I didn't really have the exact build in my mind, so it got a little screwed up. Hmm. And then I like usually you can you can beat Robo with it because uh, you can just blink on the immortal and kill it, and then all he has is gateway units against your blink. And even if you have like five stalkers against eight, you can you can usually kill kill your opponent with it. And yeah, as I as I said in the chat. Like, the Mothership Core uh, stood on top of the Immortal, so I couldn't no. focus the Immortal correctly, and Oops. I didn't even notice it because the health bars were on top of each other. Oh no! Uh, and then, well, that ended quite badly, as you could see, so... I tried to recover from with, like, four Stalker Hit Squad or something, like... Yeah, but it didn't really work out. My army wasn't big enough. Unfortunate. Well, then, uh, let's take a look at game two, then. Game two, we had King Sejong Station. On King Sejong Station, Mercury was able to take this game, so let's talk a little bit about what you guys wanted to do on this particular game. Mercury, start us off on this one. Um, that was actually my standard PvP build I always use in macro games and so on, mm -hmm. like uh, DT into Robo, into Expand, um, because I think it's the safest build you can go in PvP because you have like DTs, uh, which are always a good thing to have, mm. and you'll have a robo to uh, to stop uh, any kind of like blink or foregate or something. And um, stargate is usually a little bit tricky because if you don't scout it early enough, you can you can get a lot of damage in. Mm. And if he then scouts your DTs and counters them uh, immediately, immediately it goes wrong as well. But um, fortunately, I think he didn't see my DT shrine, so um, that ended up quite quite well for me. And uh, yeah, that was pretty much the end of the game since he didn't have the proper detection. It did turn into kind of a weird, almost base race sort of thing. But uh, yeah. yeah, what about from your perspective, Shepard? Uh, yeah, so I normally open with that Stargate opener, like um, all the macro games that I go into. Because um, I feel like it's pretty stable if I pay attention. And I, because uh, like, well, normally I don't uh, add on that fourth gateway and go for an all-in. I normally just take an expo and then macro up from there. But um, I don't know why, but I just thought, I just felt like there was some kind of opening. So I was like, well, I'll just drop another gate and we'll just go for an all-in. Mm -hmm. And obviously that was not a good idea. Mm -hmm. So, because what, I think what happened is I scouted and I saw just the, um, Twilight, I didn't see the DT Shrine, mm -hmm. so I thought, oh, blink again, and I was like, well, then I'll just push in before he has, like, enough units to stop me, and I'll be okay, and then you had DTs, and I was like, well, I think that's kind of over, so that sucked. 
Yeah. But I should have known it was DTs when that probe went out past my probe making the proxy pylon. Because normally sending a probe out like at that timing means DTs, but I didn't think well, about it until after. Usually I, I built the, the proxy pylon with my scouting probe, but I forgot, so my DTs were, were horribly late. Yeah. Whoops. But it, uh, you know, it works out that way. Sometimes. Yep. There was actually one question that I just remembered. Kind of has to go back to the first game for just a second on this. Mercury, I saw you build kind of a wall off, actually, yeah. in that game. Was there a particular reason for that? Yeah, because uh, the Blink build doesn't uh, feature a robo or any kind of detection, so since I didn't have the exact build in my mind, uh, I, I was going to, like, build sort of a wall off and put a unit in it so I can wall off uh, when there's a DT, a DT coming and maybe oh. get some detection up. Okay, so it's just kind of a, a stopgap measure if that happens. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, cool. Well, that question answered then. Let's jump over to the third game. Just whiz around all over the place. Uh, this is Overgrowth. Mercury obviously also did take this game. It was a uh, very aggressive three gate, I believe, against... Yeah. Um, well, basically the same basic a, thing. A defensive three gate. <laughs> yes, three gate versus three gate with Mothership Core. So, talk a little bit about this game, guys. Uh, Mercury, you start first. Um, yeah, I was gonna do the DT build as well, again, because, like I said, it's my standard build, so I had the double gas, and I went scouting, and at first I didn't see anything, so I was, like, kind of panicking, because uh, I thought it was, like, maybe some kind of weird uh, proxy with, uh, like, some of the, one of those late proxies with stalkers, with gas, and I didn't scout it, because those are usually built, like, somewhere far off the base. Because you don't have them to have you don't have to have them in, in the base like the two gate proxy, and um, but then I saw the buildings and at first I didn't like realize it was uh, a very early timing f uh, for the core, and then I like checked again and I was like what the fuck, mm -hmm. and I immediately dropped like a second gate because yeah well that's like what I do to defend it and uh, went well. Okay. What about from your perspective, Shedver? Um, so yeah, I just went with that build because I wasn't really confident in my ability to play. So I was like, well, maybe I can catch him off guard with this and just get a quick win. Um, but I haven't done that build in a long time. And I'll have to go back and watch the replay, but I did something wrong. and I'm not sure what it was. But when I was warping in units, I didn't have enough money to warp in the units I wanted. And um, so then... If there's a three gate versus three gate, and I can only warp in off one or two of my gateways, and the third one sits idle, I just lose. So, that was about it. Mm. Yep, pretty straightforward games otherwise. Are there any builds, finally, just kind of as a wrap-up question, that you guys like to use on ladder that you didn't feature tonight? Um... I, I watch Stardust stream a lot, mm. and uh, he, he like, a year ago or something, he used a lot of, uh, like, Stargate into Phoenix with uh, three or four gates added behind it, like pushers. Uh, he, he did, like, pushers with it, and um, I copied one of his builds where he went, like, uh, Stargate, four gate, and just built five Phoenixes and pushed. Like, it was a four gate with five Phoenixes. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, it can be really strong, especially if your opponent goes like Oracle or something, and you just kill it with your Phoenixes. That's uh, I, I like to use it, especially after the the Oracle buff, because everyone was playing Oracle and I just had Phoenixes. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, I was right. thinking about that, but I didn't have it in my mind exactly, so I just uh, well, I didn't do it. Then. Yeah, I know it's one of those builds that was incredibly popular in Wings of Liberty, and it just kind of. I suppose with the Oracle coming into play, starting to get a little bit more variety from Stargate openers. Yeah, I, I enjoy seeing that one pop up every now and again. I don't know. I just like I just like watching Phoenix micro. Phoenixes are cool, but I hate it when like you play like a macro game of Phoenix versus Phoenix. <laughs> it's the worst game ever. <laughs> okay, yeah, Phoenix versus Phoenix micro is incredibly silly. Uh, those sometimes you, turn out funny though. Yes, if you have like one Archon and bam. <laughs> Game yes, <laughs> one shot. <laughs> pretty much, it's it's pretty it's 
they're fragile enough that the Archon damage is incredibly intimidating on them. Yeah. But yeah, if you if you get one Archon in, into like stacked, you know, sometimes you stack them up to to shoot all of them at yeah, once. And, the rest of your and if you get one shot in, in into them. that clump, it's it's game over. <laughs> because they are also low then that you can just chase with your phoenixes and he has low phoenixes and all of those die. Oof. The funniest thing to me though, and I, I remember going back to that, you, you would get the phoenix cloud, you'd get like 20, 10 to 20 phoenixes on both sides, and then you can't tell how many there are. Yeah. They're just, just to the ball just, moving back and forth. shooting each other. And then, the, and then the casters would be like, it looks like we're going to have the engagement. I wonder who's going to win. I can't yeah. tell how many there are. Time to hit the units tab. Oh, one of them has 25. Guess that guy's gonna win. <laughs> but yeah, other than obvious difficulties and people trying to cast them, it was it was an interesting time. But anyway, gentlemen, thank you very much for playing this evening. I uh, look forward to seeing you guys play again if you are so interested in doing so. And I will see you all next time. See ya. See.